Praise the Lord, everybody. God bless you. And thank you for tuning in tonight to Narrow Way uh, Ministries. Hallelujah. International. I thank you uh, for just being with us for the next hour or so and uh, tuning in as I continue uh, to watch with you as God unveils these essentials for ministry. Uh, that which the high priest needed to bear or carry upon their heart and uh, the three different places and it's in Exodus 28 and so we uh, will turn there tonight. Let me just pray as we wait for people to come on and as we wait for God's glory to fall now. Lord, we exalt the word of God. We just exalt you. If I be lifted up, I will draw all men unto me. I thank you, Lord Jesus, for being lifted up tonight in all of your glory and power. As much as lieth within me, Lord, I want you to receive the glory in everything. And I thank you, Lord, for in every household tonight, there is peace. I thank you, Lord, that there is joy, provision, and the love and harmony of God in every household. I thank you for that, Father. And I thank you now for revelation flowing in the precious, glorious, mighty, and wonderful name of Jesus. Amen. Glory to God. Thank you, Lord Jesus. So we turn to Exodus 28, and we'll do that right now. What does that say right there, Dolly? Okay, yeah. I just uh, need to make sure that I can see that. Yeah, they're coming on now. All right. Well, bless the Lord. We've looked at here in Exodus 28 when uh, he said you can... Uh, These things are needed for the sons of God or the priests uh, in the Old Testament. Let me just begin reading in uh, Exodus 28, verse 1, and we'll move down as we need to. Take unto thee Aaron thy brother and his sons with him from among the children of Israel, that he may minister unto me in the priest's office. Even Aaron, Nadab, Abihu, Eleazar, and Ithamar, Aaron's sons, and thou shalt make holy garments for Aaron thy brother, for glory and for beauty. And thou shalt speak unto them that are wise-hearted, whom hath been filled with the Holy Spirit, who I have filled with the Spirit of wisdom, that they may make Aaron's garments to consecrate him, that he may minister unto me in the priest's office. Glory to God. And then he begins to go on and say, what he requires to be written, all right, or to be made, as it were. Uh, and we already looked at uh, that on the shoulders of the priest, they engraved in sediment ashes of gold, and they had to bear on their shoulders all of the names of the children of Israel that were combined somehow, some way, into a small uh, thing that uh, they placed on both of their shoulders, six on one side and six on the other, and they were to use that to carry and to do, let me just read what it says there, so we can get this out of the way here. Um, and thou shalt put the two stones upon the shoulders of the ephod for stones of memorial unto all Israel, and Aaron shall bear their names before the Lord. All right. What that means is, bearing means to carry. Okay? We have to, as high priests of God, we have to carry and bear before God the names of all the people in the body. The names of all the people that we're ministering to. And we saw how that can be a very tricky situation. Uh, and it takes a lot of effort and uh, integrity in our lives to do that thing. 
to carry them before the Lord as a memorial. Glory to God. And then he went on to say that on the breastplate he wanted, and thou shalt make upon the breastplate chains at the end of them so they can hang on to the uh, shoulders. And Aaron shall, they were connected to the, to the breastplate, and in the breastplate there were four rows of stones uh, with three names of the tribes in a row, and uh, all of those were given to, for Aaron to do what? Glory to God. Aaron shall bear the names of of the children of Israel in the breastplate of judgment upon his heart. Glory to God. When he goeth into the holy place for a memorial before the Lord continually. And then, of course, in the breastplate of judgment were placed the Urim and the Thummim, and, uh, which is <clears throat> God showing lights and perfection. It was God's way of communicating the will of God to the high priest, but they were <clears throat> to bear them before the Lord for a memorial before the Lord continually. Now that says we can't just be in it for uh, our head's sake. Our heart has to be involved in it. That means we carry the children of Israel, the body of Christ, on our heart and in our heart. In a very real way, you and I are commanded by God constantly to carry our brothers and our sisters before the Lord. Glory to Jesus. Before his holy presence, continually. And we all saw that how that could be quite a situation for us. So many times we have disagreements in the body or we'll have disagreements with one another and uh, <clears throat> there's no excuse for us not keeping our hearts right none whatsoever if you're going to be in leadership God literally commands us to bear our brother and our sister upon our heart glory to God I told you there were three things though and we haven't looked at the last one and we're going to do that right now as we turn to verse 36. And thou shalt make a plate of pure gold and grave upon it like the engravings of a signet, holiness to the Lord. Now, this plate of pure gold was uh, placed upon their head. Let's go on reading. And thou shalt put it on blue lace that it may be upon the mitre upon the forefront of the, the mitre it shall be and it shall be upon Aaron's forehead that Aaron may bear the iniquity of the holy things which the children of Israel shall hallow in all their holy gifts and it shall be always Glory to God. It shall be on their, his forehead always that they, meaning others, all of the people in the body of Christ, may be accepted before the Lord. Glory to God. So I want to look at these things and finish it up here. Uh, <clears throat> it's interesting he uses the word upon his forehead. Uh, and so let's just look up what the Hebrew says about this word forehead. <clears throat> it means to be clear, conspicuous, and in a prominent place upon the brow. In the Greek, that was the Hebrew, the Greek simply means this. The space between the eyes. Glory to God. The space between the eyes. What is that dealing with? Our minds? 
our soul. <clears throat> our soul, soul speaks of five things. Our emotions, our intellect, our feelings, our uh, attitudes, and our will. Glory to Jesus. All the desires of our mind, all of the desires in our soul come out through, uh, they pass through that, uh, the forehead, the mind. So what God tries to do, he says, make a plate. Now this is interesting because we have to make it. You can't depend on anybody else to do this but you. Glory to Jesus. Good evening, Carrie. God bless you. Uh, <clears throat> but listen to me now. Stop looking for someone else to help you in the realm of your soul, your emotions, your affections, your feelings, your will, your desires, your attitude. We can't put it off on anybody else. We, as leadership, have to make a plate. Glory to God. And this word for plate means something that glistens or that's burnished or a bright colored plate. It's a shining thing. A flower blooming. Gleaming is what it says. Now, I wonder if many of you could say that if someone was to look, someone was to look inside your mind and look inside uh, your soul, that they'd come away saying, Man, they have a gleaming mind. I dare say many of us would not want anybody to get inside of the chambers of our imagery. Glory to Jesus. But we're on our way. We're better than we used to be. But we're not what we're going to be. But we keep moving on, pressing on towards the mark for the prize of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. Receive that now as peace from Him. Now upon this plate, and how, how are they supposed to make it? And thou shalt make a plate of pure gold. Glory to Jesus. Pure gold. And that speaks to us, of course, of the character of God. But it's pure. It's not, you know, halfway there or uh, somewhat there. No, it's pure gold. Makes me originally or immediately think of Matthew 5, 8. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. In every situation and everything we go through in life, we can see God as long as we keep our hearts pure. It's such a thing that God has placed on us because none of us really know how far man has fallen since the fall. And uh, all I can tell you is it's getting worse. It's going to be like Genesis 6, 5 there. When the Lord acknowledged that as he considered man, mankind, let me just see if I can find that for you. Um, Genesis 6, 5. Well, I'll just turn to it. How about that? Genesis 6, 5. Turn there with me, if you will. It says, and God saw that the wickedness of man was great in the earth, and that every imagination of the thoughts of his heart was only evil continually. Glory to Jesus. Was only evil continually. Now he connects imaginations and thoughts there. Every imagination of the thoughts of their heart. 
That's why when Ezekiel talks about the chambers of imagery, he's saying things that we know to be true. There are hundreds and hundreds of chambers in the soul of man. And in those chambers, the Holy Ghost and the Word of God are going one by one and trying to take them over. And you become more godlike as God gets more chambers that are filled with himself. He must increase and I must decrease, John the Baptist said. Increase how? Increase in the Lord taking the chambers of your soul one by one. Now those chambers are either filled with God, the devil, or some kind of... Uh, horrible desire that we were born with. And one by one, God is filling those chambers. That's why we say that justification and glorification happen instantly, instantaneously. We are born again, saved, our spirits are immediately made perfect before God. And when that day comes, in the twinkling of an eye, every one of our bodies shall be changed in the glorification like his glorious body. But we spend the rest of our lives dealing with our soul. Glory to Jesus. Now let this saying sink down into your ears right now. God is, what's he doing now? He's dealing with intermingling and interacting with us in relation to our souls. That process is called sanctification, and it takes a lifetime. And the more sanctified you are when, you, when glorification happens, the more your body will change and be like Jesus. Let your light so shine before men. Arise, shine, for thy light is come, and the glory of the Lord is risen upon thee. Our physical bodies will change like unto his glorious body as the Spirit of God determines how much sanctification did you allow in your lifetime, or how much did I allow in my lifetime. <clears throat> I asked my old dear friend and mentor, Uncle Arthur, one time, does it ever stop the dealings of God? And he uh, fumbled around for a few minutes and he looked up at me and said, never. And I was a young minister then and thinking, you know, full of all kinds of ambitions and desires and, you know, all the kind of things that are going through uh, when we're going in that stage of the young man stage and we're, uh, you know, we want everything to happen immediately. But I realized when he said that, that really for about the 15, 20 years I had been walking with Jesus, it was so true. God is after our hearts. God is after our souls. Glory to Jesus. And so... But he wants us to be protected. See, we, we have a plate of gold. Our minds are surrounded and filled with the character of God. A plate of pure gold and engraved upon it. What does that word mean? It means to carve something. It's like a sculpture. The Holy Ghost is writing upon, renewing our minds as he writes upon it the word of God. And for anyone to say that, you know, they have been, you know, their lives are, are characterized by full, you know, full of joy and prosperity and happiness. Amen. I think that's how God wants us to live. But, to say that we're not going through the dealings of God is to do God a disservice and our brothers and sisters a disservice because 
what happens is you and I then begin to condemn ourselves. We then begin to think, well, everybody else is growing. Everybody else is being changed. But yet here I am still dealing with this same thing over and over again for years. I know nobody likes to say it, but sanctification is a very long process. Because our souls are the farthest thing from God. Man, when he chose to eat from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, chose not. Chose not. And as he did that, by Genesis chapter 6, which was really just, uh, you know, a couple of generations after Adam fell, that their imaginations and the thoughts of their heart were only evil continually, and God then judged the earth with water. And everybody but the family of Noah died on the earth. When I see how bad and wicked the world is today, I sometimes say to myself, my goodness, what are we going to be five years from now? And all the things that made the Lord love us, that we can show absolute mercy, uh, we can forgive, we can, you know, bear the burden of others and help people when they're down. He loves that about mankind. But now we live in a society and in a world where it's every man for himself. What am I going to get? What's going to happen to me? Never has there been a more selfish people on the earth than now. I don't believe. Even within the body of Christ. So, how can God then put a plate of pure gold on our heads and then to have engraved upon it? Now, it's like this. That word engraving means to carve. I told you it was like being a sculptor. And so it's you have to put pressure to engrave something. There's a lot of scratching and, and pressure. As God begins to place in our souls his glorious character. Pure gold. Glory to Jesus. And what did it say on that seal or signet upon his head? Holiness to the Lord. Glory to Jesus. Wants it in a prominent place where everybody can see it. This is the witness. Holiness to the Lord. Written so that everybody can read it. Glory to Jesus. Now, as I said earlier, you know, can you can you say that if someone was to go inside your soul or your mind tonight, that there would be, uh, they would see something shining? That there would be some glorious, uh, you know, God's glory would be, would come bursting out of your soul? Well, maybe some more than others. But I can tell you this, for most of my life, I would rather not. Because everybody has darkness in their lives. Everybody has secrets that we're trying by the grace of God to weed out of our lives. And why do you think God sends us testing after testing, trial after trial? Because he's putting the pressure. He's trying to engrave upon your hearts because 
It takes engraving to make the complete change. When we have something that says holiness to the Lord, how easy is it to write? How hard is it to live? Holiness to the Lord in everything we do. Now that word holy means a sacred thing. A sacred thing. Thing. Glory to Jesus. Misha Runda Lavasatama. It tells people by when they look at us and judge us that we live separated lives, separated to the Lord. Doing our best every day to walk in holiness. Glory to Jesus. Now, I said that, uh, and if you'll look in, uh, I would say your Bibles, but hallelujah, many of you do not have a Narrow Way uh, Ministries International Bible, but we hope that you'll be getting one soon. And uh, But we have in there, you know, a not only all the names of the Bible and all the directions, all the numbers and colors, but in that special Bible, we also have uh, <clears throat> all the objects. We put the Deeper Truth Dictionary uh, in, uh, in this Bible. And if you look up the word forehead there, this is what it'll say to you. It represents our minds, And having the mind of Christ. Glory to Jesus. Now, your mind cannot, uh, can be, whether it's of the world or whatever, you know, pride can be showing in your mind. But always remember, holiness to the Lord. Everything we do and say, we must pause and wait. I've learned this the older I've gotten. And I hope now that as 60, when I'm 68, that glory to Jesus, I think, meditate just for a second before anything comes out. Glory to Jesus. Holiness, the sacred thing. Now, I know that many of us, uh, well, let me just go into uh, the mind and our, our, our soulish realm and what this literally means to us as a people. What do we need to see in the scriptures to lay this truth to us? I'm laying this foundation tonight in your soulish realm so that you know what our minds are supposed to be. And then I'm going to look at uh, foreheads that are not according to the scriptures. And I can't wait till we get to the bald forehead. Hallelujah. I have some things I'm going to say about that, and I'll probably be sharing that on Sunday morning. But there are several in the scriptures that, that you know, scriptures that talk about the forehead and uh, <clears throat> all that's going on, but it relates, and as we see that, we can look at our own lives and determine if those things are operative in us. Now, of course, it doesn't mean every bald man has these problems. We know Elijah, you know, they said to him, go up thou bald head. Certainly, it's not talking about the physical, but these are all spiritually speaking. They point to something else, okay? But let me just run over a few scriptures <clears throat> just to solidify in our minds what we're talking about. Isaiah 26, 3 says this, Thou wilt keep him in perfect peace whose mind is stayed upon thee. Glory to Jesus. That means we can't let our mind and our imaginations go free. We can't just sit there and think about what we want to think about. Someone else has moved in 
to our soulish man. And the name of that person is the Holy Spirit, the Holy Ghost. He's moved in. We've invited him in. And if we're going to, you know, uh, continue with him, then we need to make sure that our minds are stayed upon him. <clears throat> now, you remember in Lamentations 3, he's lamenting uh, there about all that's been happening to Israel. And he says this in verse 21 of Lamentations 3, This I recall to my mind. Therefore, have I hope. Glory to Jesus. If you're depressed, you're down, uh, you know, having a foundation in the scriptures is vital to bring you out of that place. This I recall to my mind, therefore have I hope. It is of the Lord's mercies that we are not consumed because his compassions fail not. They are new every morning. Great is thy faithfulness. Glory to Jesus. You want to have hope? Amen. Recall to mind that God is ever faithful. That his mercy is renewed every morning in your life and in my life. Glory to Jesus. Now, you remember the story in Mark chapter 5 about the demoniac uh, who was uh, bound by a legion of devils and so on, and how that uh, when he met Jesus, see, the thing is this, he was hungering for deliverance. So that's why when he heard that Jesus was coming, he ran to him. Now this is a bound man with a thousand devils. And they talked about how many times they tried to, you know, tie that man up and, you know, cause him to be still and all that kind of stuff. And it never worked. He broke through metal chains. Supernatural power was at work. But Jesus cast the devils out of him. And there was a herd of sheep nearby. And the demons left the man, went into the sheep, and the sheep ran down the hillside and killed themselves. Why? Because that way the demons are free then to travel and find somebody else. Glory to Jesus. But there was a legion of them. And when people came uh, later to find out what had happened, they saw that this man was seated and clothed and in his what? Right mind. Glory to Jesus. In his right mind. Glory to Jesus. That happened to me several times when I, after I first got saved over the first few years of my Christian walk. I was, deliverance was ministered to me so many times during that space of several years. And I'm telling you, every time it happened, I got better. Glory to Jesus. That only comes, though, if you have a pastor and if you're committed to a local fellowship and, uh, you know, you're just not out there doing what you want to do. And you submit yourself to a man or a woman of God. And by the grace of God, God lets them then give you. He gives you pastors according to his heart. And that they will minister deliverance to you. You will find freedom. And for many of you, I think seated is a good word. Some of us are always so moving around everywhere that to find us seated is a good thing. It means to sit under the Word of God. 
Mary sat at his feet, clothed. Now that's another one. It's talking about clothing ourselves with the, you know, uh, attributes of God. If a man take fire in his bosom, his heart, shall his clothes be not burned. God, inviting God's fire into your soulish realm, causes all of your clothing to be burned up, especially when it comes to adultery. But he was in his what? Right mind. Right now, I just pray for some of you that God gives you a right mind. Right now, let the glory of the Lord so fill your house and just fill your soul right now that he gives you the peace of God. Glory to Jesus. What does it say about those noble Bereans in Acts 17, 11? And they received the word with what? All readiness of mind. Glory to Jesus. They searched the scriptures daily to see if these things were so. And I pray and hope that your life is now to a place where you get in the word of God every day. That you can't live without it. Because as we search, we can always know that just like that manna fell, and they would get up every morning and go and take their portion of manna, there was just enough for every household. Glory to Jesus. Do you know that God, as you give yourself to the Word of God, I know some of you don't even like to read, but if you would just read several chapters a day, commit to doing it. Give yourself to the Word of God. You know what the Bible says? God will give himself to you. And he'll, you'll actually come to the place where you can't live without the word of God. Man does not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of God. Glory to Jesus. I want us to turn, if we can, to Romans chapter 8. And I'll quote some scriptures as you're turning there. Romans 12, 2 says, Be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by what? The renewing of your mind. Every day, you see, our mind, which are carnal, we're born into this world with a carnal mind. It is assailed every moment of every day by the world, the flesh, and the devil. Every one of those three things is trying to find a home in your soul. And if we yield just a little bit, we're making decisions all the time. Thousands of decisions every day in relation to our soul. And we can hear the Apostle Paul, you know, talking from the depths of his heart. When he says that, you know, the things I want to do in Romans chapter 7 are the very things I don't end up doing, even though I want to do them. So he talks then about finding another law in his members. Here, let's turn to uh, uh, Romans chapter 8. Verse Five. For they that are after the flesh do mind the things of the flesh. Glory to God. But they, they that are after the Spirit, the things of the Spirit. 
What are you going after every day? I'm trying to transform my life to where I'm going after the things of the Spirit of God. Because our minds want to do carnal things. For to be carnally minded is death. But to be spiritually minded is life and peace. Because the carnal mind is an enemy against God. For it is not subject to the law of God, neither indeed can be. So then they that are in the flesh cannot please God. But ye are not in the flesh, but in the Spirit, if so be that the Spirit of God dwells in you. Glory to God. All right? Because we're born again, we have a head start on everybody else in the world. We have a differing mind or a different thing that's working in our members. We don't just do carnal things. We don't live a carnal lifestyle. A lifestyle. We want to do the will of God. Because how many of you know to be carnally minded is death? That everything we do that's birthed in the carnal mind brings death of some kind. Not actual death where you stop breathing, perhaps, but death to the spiritual man inside of us. Hundreds of times every day, you and I make decisions that will either give to the things of the Spirit or will give to the things of the flesh. You see, our carnal mind is an enemy. It's opposed to God. It doesn't want to subject itself not only to the law or the word of God, but to anything. What's that passage in Psalms? You know, uh, in one of the early chapters there. Oh, gosh. Let me just find it for you. Why do the heathen rage? This is Psalms 2. And the people imagine a vain thing. The kings of the earth set themselves. The rulers take counsel together against the Lord and against his anointed, saying, Let us break their bands asunder and cast away their cords from us. They don't want any cords. They don't want any law operating in their life. They want freedom. Freedom to sin. It will always bring death in every situation. You know, that word for renewing in Romans 12, you know, be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind, it means an overhaul, a complete change for the better. Glory to Jesus. It means renovation. We're so concerned about renovating, you know, our houses and lands and all that stuff. We need to renovate, allow the Holy Ghost to totally transform our minds from a broken, busted, carnal, evil, wicked imagination life to one that's holiness to the Lord. Do you see how far we have to go? Second Corinthians 4, verse 4 comes into play here. You know, to whom or in whom the God of this age, is what that means, hath blinded the minds of them which believe not, lest the light of the glorious gospel of Christ, who is the image of God, should shine unto them. We need to let the glorious gospel, the word of the living God, shine in our souls, in the darkness of our carnal minds. Into every corner, every dark and lonely corner. Let the image of God walk in there. Glory to Jesus. In Ephesians 4, it says this, Be renewed in the spirit of your mind. Glory to Jesus. 
Let's look at that just for a moment if we can. Ephesians 4, 17. This I see therefore and testify in the Lord that you henceforth walk not as other Gentiles walk in the vanity of their mind. Glory to God. Having the understanding darkened, being alienated from the life of God through the ignorance that is in them because of the blindness of their heart who being past feeling have given themselves over unto lasciviousness to work all uncleanness with greediness, but you have not so learned Christ. Glory to Jesus. Oh, my brother, my sister, you have not so learned Christ Jesus. If so be that you have heard him and have been taught by him, as the truth is in Jesus, that you put off concerning the former conversation or lifestyle of the old man, which is corrupt according to the deceitful lust, and be renewed, to make new in the spirit of your mind. Glory to Jesus. And that you put on the new man, which is after God is created in righteousness, look at this, and true holiness. Holiness to the Lord is what our Bible says. Now, Philippians chapter 2 says, let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus. How he thought it not robbery to be called equal with God. He humbled himself. Let the mind of Christ be in you. You see, corporately, the Bible says in Corinthians, we have the mind of Christ. So when we come together corporately, we can have the mind of Christ. But individually, let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus. He humbled himself and went from magnificent glory to put on the horrible, horrible darkness of mankind and walk around in it for 33 and a half years, overcame. He was tempted in all points, but he never sinned. Glory to Jesus. One perfect man came to die for billions of imperfect people that he might free them from the captivity of their minds and loose them, renew them into the glorious liberty of the sons of God. Glory to Jesus. Now, uh, in uh, 2 Timothy 1.7, it says this, God hath not given us the spirit of fear, but of power, love, and a sound mind. Now what this word sound means in the Greek is, it simply means discipline, self-control, soundness. David in Psalms 119 verse 80 said, Let my heart be sound in thy statutes, that I be not ashamed. Our minds get us into trouble. You see, it's out of the heart that evil thoughts come. As we give in to the imagination, as, as the enemy or whatever brings something to us, and we think about it, don't allow yourself or give yourself time to meditate on it. Move on. As Corinthians tells us, bring every thought into captivity. Now, there's a uh, thing in the midst of the body of Christ that I want to talk about just for a few minutes. 
You see, in 2 Timothy, or rather it's Titus, chapter 1, verse 15 says this, Unto the pure all things are pure, but unto him, rather, but unto them that are defiled, glory to Jesus, but unto him, unto them, rather, that are defiled and unbelieving is nothing pure. But even their mind and conscience is defiled. Now that word for defiled means this. To sully or taint, to contaminate or defile or pollute. Glory to God. You know, you and a brother, maybe a couple of sisters are standing around talking and the situation is pure uh, and the conversation is glorious and someone comes in and just says something and it taints the whole conversation. That's just like the enemy. We do not need to listen to evil reports about our brothers and sisters. Not if. You will not hear that out of someone who's doing their best to keep a pure heart. Unto the pure, all things are pure. Glory to Jesus. But unto them that are defiled and unbelieving. Let me ask you a question tonight. Are you defiled? He was writing to Christians. Yes, there's, there's something called the sinners in Zion. We're defiled all the time, perhaps. Then we repent, get our hearts right. We seem to be clean for a while, but yet then we don't continue in the Word of God. We give ourselves to carnal imaginations and we find ourselves in a tremendous fix. Stay away from things that taint you, that sully your soul. Stay away from people that sully you. Or actually, well, God will bring us into the presence of those people so we can walk uprightly and they can see the glory of God in us and be tempted then and have the opportunity to change, have their minds renewed. As Solomon said in Proverbs 16, 3, Commit thy works unto the Lord, and thy thoughts shall be established. You can have an established thought, or your thoughts be established, if you commit your works to the Lord. That word for work simply means anything that's done. Do all things to the glory of God. In everything give thanks, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus concerning you. We know that we make those choices every day. And if we could give ourselves to the word of God, remember what Hebrews 4.12 says, For the word of God is quick, powerful, sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even to the dividing asunder of soul and spirit and joints and marrow, and is a discerner of the thoughts and intents of the heart. God knows the difference between a thought and an intent. And the word of God will change your intentions. Glory to Jesus. Glory to Jesus. The Word of God will change your intentions. Now, in Ezekiel chapter 8, I want us to look there just for a moment if we can. Ezekiel chapter 8. Blessed be the name of the Lord. In 
Okay, here we are. Ezekiel chapter 8, verse 6. He said, Furthermore to me, Son of man, seest thou what they do? Well, let's start in verse 5. He said unto me, Son of man, lift up your eyes now the way toward the north. So I lifted up mine eyes the way toward the north, and behold, northward of the gate of the altar, this image of jealousy in the entry. He said therefore unto me, Son of man, seest thou what they do? Even the great abominations that the house of Israel committeth here, that I should go far off from my sanctuary. But turn thee yet again, and thou shalt see greater abominations. And he brought me to the door of the court, and when I looked, and behold, a hole in the wall. Then he said to me, Son of man, dig now in the wall. And when I had digged in the wall, behold, a door. He said unto me, Go in, and behold the wicked abominations that they do here. So I went in and saw, and behold, every form of creeping things, abominable beasts, and all idols of the house of Israel portrayed upon the wall round about. And there stood before them seventy men of the ancients of the house of Israel. Glory to Jesus. And he goes on to mention a particular man. Then he said unto me, Son of man, verse 12, Hast thou seen what the ancients of the house of Israel do in the dark? Every man in the chambers of his imagery. For they say, The Lord seeth us not, for the Lord hath forsaken the earth. Do you think, glory to God, that God, see, there's a, there's a, <clears throat> by mercy and truth, iniquity is purged. God, as long as he knows we are going for the truth, we're doing the best we can to walk with God. We repent immediately after we sin. We get our hearts right. We cast down imaginations and every high thing that uh, exalteth itself above the knowledge of God, above the word of God. And bringing into captivity every thought unto the obedience of Jesus Christ. Take prisoner the thoughts in your soul and in your mind of the things that are not of God. Glory to Jesus. Think on these things, Paul says in Philippians. Things that are pure, honest, of good report. And so on. Think on these things. Let your mind be consumed with love. Let your mind be consumed with the stories in the Bible. Let the Word of God so fill your heart that you're bursting within. Glory to Jesus. In the chambers of their imagery. You know, Job 42 verse 2 says this, No thought can be withholden from thee. No thought. He knows every thought we ever have. And just as you don't want your wife or your children to see certain things that you say and do, can you imagine if Jesus, if we lived in the manifest presence of God, the conscious presence of the Lord Jesus, how much carnality would cease in the body of Christ? Glory to Jesus. How much carnality would cease? So we've seen in the scriptures how that God wants us to have a sound mind, a right mind. God wants our thoughts to be established. God wants our soulish man to be renewed. God is looking to change our soulish man so that we can say, Holiness unto the Lord. Look into my mind and you'll see something sacred. 
Look into my mind, and it won't be like the ancients of the house of Israel, that you see all manner of darkness, all manner of sin and depravity. Glory to Jesus. God is wanting to bring the people of God to a place where every one of us can walk freely. But you can't wear holiness unto the Lord because it's in such a prominent place. That space between your eyes, your mind. Glory to Jesus. Let the Spirit of God sanctify you completely. Glory to Jesus. Let there be no more double-mindedness in us. Because a double-minded man is unstable in all his ways. Glory to Jesus. Double-mindedness is just another Scripture that tells us God doesn't want that in our lives. He wants us then to have a right mind, a sound mind, a word-filled mind. That we can't help but think of several scriptures every time a word is spoken or somebody says something. Just immediately that foundation in you begins to churn out scriptures. Glory to Jesus. Commit thy works unto the Lord, and thy thoughts shall be established. We commit our works unto you tonight, Lord Jesus. We give you the keys to our carnal mind. Pray with me right now. I feel that there's such, a, such, such an anointing. Yes, I want to just read this passage before I pray to you. Philippians chapter 4. And I want us to pray with every bit of faith we can muster right now. Be careful for nothing. Don't be anxious for anything. Be careful for nothing but in everything. Glory to Jesus. In everything, by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known unto God, and the peace of God, which passeth, All understanding. Where do we understand? With our mind. Where do we reason? With our mind. Jesus said so many times, Why reason ye among yourselves? You're full of doubtful disputations. Don't be saying things that bring doubt. And the peace of God will pass by. All understanding. All of the places in our soulish man and in our mind. And it shall keep your heart and your mind in Christ Jesus. I pray, Lord Jesus, right now that that word will be true for every single one that hears the sound of my voice. That's listening right now. I pray, Father... For every disciple of Narrow Way Ministries, every disciple, that you would bless them and keep them. Glory to Jesus. And we'll be careful for nothing, but in everything by prayer and supplication let your requests be made known unto God. And the P.
peace of God. Let your shalom fill every heart and soul. Every person now. Fill them with your peace. In the precious name of Jesus. The only way to change your mind my mind is to be renewed by the word of God. Wherewithal shall a young man cleanse his way? By taking heed thereto according. Glory to Jesus. All right, dear friends. Well, I'm going to continue this Sunday morning uh, by the grace of God. And I'm going to talk about the different kinds of mindsets that we need to be watching and uh, I'll pray at the end of that meeting to, uh, for deliverance for everyone, for all of us, myself included, if uh, God should uh, witness to me about uh, something that I'm not walking out. All I want from you tonight is a willingness to say, Lord Jesus, please help me. That's all you need. Glory to Jesus. All right, dear friends. Well, I love you, and uh, I, I pray for you. Let me just share a few things with you now. Uh, tomorrow is uh, Wesley's wife, whose name is Tawanda, of course. Tomorrow is her birthday. And I just got a text from him late this afternoon that they're out of electricity. I don't know how they run electricity in Zambia, but when you're out, they just, it just stops. As much as you pay, they'll take you to that far and not until you give them more money. So, I mean, they're out of electricity. Then we also have at the, you know, the first of the month's coming up. And uh, we owe, you know, we owe their renter $900 and the person that rents the house to them. And that's where we have our meetings. And so I'm asking you tonight, by the grace of God, please, there are several things we need to remember. Let's send to Wanda some birthday money. Amen? Let's send her a present. Glory to God. Secondly, we need to pray and believe God for the money to pay for their house. We've made a commitment. And I know there are many of you that say, well, what about me? What about my situation? The quickest way to get off your own situation is to put your mind on somebody else's. You'd be surprised. Jesus said it's in the house. It's in the house. And I believe that tonight. I believe tonight. I'm going to try to raise, by the grace of God, several thousand dollars. We need 900. That's a lot. But if we're going to, we also need to pay for, we're going to have a glory conference in August. And uh, that needs to be paid for before we ever go there. That'll be five, six hundred dollars. That needs to be paid. Well, that's fifteen hundred. And then if we send her any birthday money, whatever. Let alone, you know, my own needs and uh, my family's needs. Glory to Jesus. I'm asking you tonight from my heart, let's give to the Lord. Amen? Praise God. And if somebody out there knows the uh, website, I wish you would just put that on there right now. Uh, you didn't? Okay. Uh, my wife sends her greetings. Glory to Jesus. Uh, and I'll be coming down there in a couple of weeks. We're going to hold meetings. And... Uh, I'm looking forward to seeing many of you as I can. Uh, we met with Pete and Sarah recently, and <clears throat> God's bringing changes in their lives. And so we pray and believe with them for their provision during these changes. We pray for Keith Ratcliffe, that God will continue to bless and heal his body. Glory to Jesus. We thank God for Robert. For his glorious testimony of deliverance from stage 4 cancer. 
Glory to God. He's not the first person that God has spoken to me. When, I, when they were at their worst, when the cancer was doing its height, or during the height of their cancer, and when the doctors were telling them they had stage four of it, how many times, by the grace of God, have I prayed and God has answered by healing people with that. Blessed be the name of the Lord. I love you, my friend. I'm for you. And if there's no money in Airway Ministries International, then I just pay for it myself. Glory to Jesus. Help me. Help me tonight, will you? By sending an offering to Airway Ministries International. Amen. We're believing for several thousand dollars before this weekend is out. Perhaps you can give some Sunday or whatever just before this weekend is out. I want us to raise that much so we can do the things that we need to do. God bless you. Tune in Sunday because it's going to be a pretty glorious time. Amen. God bless you and keep you in the precious name of Jesus. Amen.